This is the latest situation in the Tianjin Biguiyuan residential complex, where subsidence, tilting, and cracking have occurred. Videos taken by owners show that there are construction workers everywhere in the complex. Multiple areas with subsidence, cracking, and protruding ground have been temporarily filled and leveled. Some areas have not been filled yet, and geotextiles have been used to cover certain sections of the ground. Residents who uncovered the geotextiles discovered that the cracks between the buildings and the ground have become larger, and the degree of subsidence has worsened. Some videos indicate that buildings 37, 38, and 39, which experienced significant tilting before, have tilted even more severely. In one video, a resident mentions that the ground near building 39 has sunk more than 2 meters. Another clip shows that the walls of the townhouse area to the west of building 39 have deformed and suffered damage, sinking by approximately 40 centimeters. Residents who inspected the underground garage found that there was nearly one meter deep of accumulated water, and the garage has not been repaired yet. Other residents observed that water in their own building's underground garage had been drained, while grouting operations were still ongoing. A voice resembling a construction worker can be heard in one video, stating the importance of controlling grouting pressure to avoid cracking the basement floor. A video recorded by a homeowner shows that the cracks in the underground garage are still expanding and have reached a width of over 30 centimeters. It has been almost 20 days since the subsidence, tilting, and cracking occurred in the Biguiyuan residential complex in Tianjin on May 31st. The preliminary conclusions of the expert group have been announced. Based on the initial findings, it is almost certain that the authorities will classify this subsidence accident as a natural disaster. This allows them to conceal the responsibilities they should bear, which has caused dissatisfaction among the homeowners. In response to this, we have conducted another interview with geologist Mr. Henry Lee, who will analyze the actual responsibilities of the government and the geotechnical investigation companies in this accident from a professional perspective. On June 13th, Tianjin's official media outlet Jinyun published a short report. The report stated, on June 13th, the emergency response and handling of local ground subsidence in Bali Tai Town, Jinan District, is progressing in an orderly manner. In order to effectively control the subsidence and prevent further losses, real-time monitoring of the relevant buildings is being conducted, and grouting operations are being carried out in the surrounding subsidence areas. The grouting began on June 1st at 16 o'clock, and as of 14 o'clock of the 13th, a total of 2,520 tons of cement have been injected underground via 42 grouting points. The latest monitoring data shows that the grouting measures have shown effectiveness. Currently, some high-rise apartment buildings have lifted their closures, but homeowners express fear of building collapse and dare not return home. The Chinese media have stopped reporting on this event. A homeowner released a video announcing the official compensation standards. According to the announcement, starting from July 10th, residents will no longer be able to stay in the hotels arranged by the authorities. After moving out of the hotels, each household will receive a compensation of 5,000 yuan, approximately 700 US dollars, and three months of housing subsidy. The total subsidy amount will be six months, with a monthly rate of 20 yuan or 2.8 US dollars per square meter per household. For example, for a suite with a housing area of 100 square meters, the owner will receive a total compensation of 17,000 yuan or around 2,400 US dollars. The announcement does not mention which entity will pay for the compensation. Some homeowners have expressed their disagreement with the compensation standards. Regarding the cause of the ground subsidence, neither the expert group nor the government has provided a written conclusion signed by experts. Instead, they have released information through interviews with an expert by official media outlets. The released information only consists of text without mentioning the names of the experts or providing any relevant pictures or videos. 
After Tianjin's official media outlet Jinyun released the news on June 8th, major media outlets reprinted the press release. In response to the cause of the subsidence incident, the expert said, "This kind of situation is extremely rare. Based on the various data we currently possess." We preliminarily judge that this event is a sudden geological disaster. The objective reason is that the deep geological structure is relatively complex, according to various advanced detection methods conducted by national research institutions. It is inferred that there might be a geological cavity below 1,300 meters. This geological structure is not something that can be detected by conventional investigation methods. We cannot rule out that the drilling of geothermal wells touched the deep geological structure, causing the loss of shallow soil and water in the affected area, and leading to surface subsidence. After the news was published on June 10th, representatives of the homeowners had a conversation with government officials and asked a few questions. One, the experts say that there is a suspected cavity 1,300 meters below. Who approved the drilling of geothermal wells to extract underground hot water at that time? You said it was undetectable at 1,300 meters. So how did you approve the geothermal well drilling? Two, it's not ruled out that drilling geothermal wells touched the deep geological structure. So what has been ruled out? What else is left not excluded? Three, high-rise buildings are affected to varying degrees. But where exactly is the variation? Where is the data? There is no data. We don't know how much the building is tilting, how much it has cracked, whether it can be repaired, or if it can be fixed properly. Four, after nine days, we see on the announcement that some measures have been taken, and I want to know what measures have been taken. Everyone wants to know. You release the data. We don't understand it, but some people do, so you should release it. Five. As for the cause of the accident, the authorities' response is that they don't know. The responsible party has yet to be determined. How the homeowners are to be relocated remains uncertain. The test data is unknown. The remedial measures are undefined, and the timeline for resolution is unclear. What do they know at present? It seems like they only have information about the homeowners' addresses, family member details, identity card numbers, and which hotels they're residing in. Our privacy has been investigated at least five to six times. I've received five to six inquiry calls. It's not just one or two of us who have been invited for a cup of tea by the police, and I suspect my turn is coming soon. Aren't the authorities supposed to serve the people wholeheartedly? The officials present in the video can be seen not responding to the homeowners' questions. Regarding the preliminary conclusion announced by the official media. Henry mentioned that he has been unable to access technical data related to the subsidence site, nor could he find relevant geotechnical investigation, design, and construction documentation for the residential complex. So he can only analyze the situation based on publicly released information and limited data. His preliminary judgment suggests that this subsidence accident should be classified as a liability accident. According to the specification for geological survey in urban and rural planning issued by the Ministry of Housing and Urban Rural Development of China, the local government must conduct a geotechnical investigation for urban and rural planning before planning the construction of a residential complex. The investigation evaluates the suitability of the site for engineering construction. If there are adverse geological effects. Or geological hazards affecting the site's stability, necessary special investigations should be conducted, and suggestions for prevention and control measures should be proposed. In other words, the government should have conducted a geotechnical investigation for urban and rural planning and obtained the results before approving the construction plan for this residential complex. Additionally, the regulations require the archiving of geotechnical investigation reports. Furthermore, the regulations stipulate that for ground subsidence areas, existing data should be collected, analyzed, and organized, and if necessary, drilling verification should be conducted. 
the investigation should cover the range of subsidence, the structure and thickness of the quaternary strata, groundwater levels and their dynamic changes, groundwater extraction, analysis of the causes of subsidence, and prediction of its development trends. Regarding karst, the distribution, development characteristics, and hazards should be investigated. The geological environmental conditions and groundwater dynamic conditions should be examined to assess their stability. Before the construction of the Biguiyuan Residential Complex, according to national specifications such as the Code for Investigation of Geotechnical Engineering, at least two rounds of geotechnical investigations should be conducted, specifically studying adverse geological conditions such as subsidence and karst. According to the Tianjin Geological Disaster Prevention and Control Plan, the Biguiyuan Residential Complex area is located in a CF7 zone, which is a secondary key area for the prevention and control of ground subsidence and ground fissure geological hazards. The prevention and control measures include strict control of groundwater over-exploitation, promoting water source conversion, and strengthening the construction and protection of groundwater and ground subsidence monitoring facilities. Based on statistical data from 2019, the annual subsidence at the location of the Biguiyuan residential area is approximately 20 to 30 millimeters. Henry speculates that, in several rounds of technical investigations, no problems with karst formations were identified. If these subsidence and deep cavities were truly discovered, it is highly likely that the construction of high-rise residential buildings would not have been planned here. Regarding the expert statement that there may be geological cavities below a depth of 1300 meters, which cannot be detected by conventional survey methods, Henry points out that the experts did not specify what constitutes conventional survey methods. In Tianjin, many geothermal wells have been drilled to depths exceeding 1300 meters, and there are also numerous oil and gas wells with depths exceeding 1300 meters. These wells are not drilled randomly in just any location. Techniques such as seismic exploration and drilling can detect structures below 1300 meters, and these are conventional and mature methods that have been used for decades. The Biguiyuan residential area is located in the J52 geothermal block, and the government should have conducted explorations and assessments before auctioning off this geothermal block. They have also explored the geothermal reservoir of the Wumishan Formation, which is buried at a depth greater than 1300 meters. The experts stated that it is not ruled out that the drilling of geothermal wells may have encountered deep geological structures resulting in shallow soil erosion and surface subsidence in the affected area. Henry explains that when drilling geothermal wells, at least two sets of casings are typically used. The first casing, extending from the surface to the fresh bedrock, separates the sand and clay layers within the loose layer, which is approximately 400 meters thick at that location. The second casing is usually installed above the water intake section, According to the auction notice for the J52 geothermal block, the geothermal well across the street is designed to extract hot water from the deep Wumishan formation. Therefore, the second casing should be installed above the top of this formation, which is estimated to be a depth greater than 1600 meters. The drilling rig collapsed on May 31st, and local residents reported that the drilling operation had been ongoing for two weeks. Based on the progress of the drilling, it is unlikely that they had reached a depth of 1600 meters. Even if the drilling did encounter a cavity, it is unlikely that a large amount of shallow soil and water could suddenly enter the cavity. Firstly, the casing in the loose layer acts as a barrier. Secondly, the deep groundwater is under pressure, and the depth of the water table in deep formations does not equal the depth of the formations themselves. For example, the water table depth in a geothermal well, J7, near the Bi Guiyuan area in 2017 was approximately 150 meters. The so-called cavity in the deep formations is actually filled with water. 
If shallow soil and water were to enter, the deep water would need to be displaced, which cannot happen in a short period. Thirdly, after subsidence occurs, the overlying layers above the cavity will sink, and the wellbore, with a diameter of just over 30 centimeters, would be closed off by the geological formation, preventing significant soil and water entering the deep cavity. The ground near buildings 37, 38, and 39, adjacent to the geothermal well site, has subsided by over 2 meters. How much soil and water loss would be required to achieve this? Even assuming that the borehole was not closed off by compression, it would take a significant amount of time for such a large volume of material to flow through a borehole with a diameter of just over 30 centimeters. The statement, it is not ruled out, implies that it may or may not be related to the drilling of geothermal wells. The experts may have other considerations and reasons for not mentioning other factors. Henry believes that, even without drilling geothermal wells, subsidence could still occur if the conditions for it were present. At the time of the subsidence accident, the geothermal wells had not yet commenced significant water yield production. Henry points out that, from a tectonic perspective, the Biguiyuan residential area is located within the Baitang Ko Depression, not far from the intersection of the Changdong Fault and the Haihe River Fault, with other regional fault structures in its vicinity. For geotechnical investigation companies, the first thing they should have investigated is whether karst development exists in the Orctovician limestone and underlying layers. However, after at least three rounds of technical investigations, no karst features were found. The Tianjin government first approved the construction of a residential area in this subsidence zone and later approved the drilling of geothermal wells for underwater extraction. Moreover, the local government was aware that groundwater extraction would lead to subsidence. This decision-making process is truly difficult to understand. In summary, Henry concludes that by categorizing the subsidence incident as a sudden geological disaster, the responsibility of the government, geotechnical investigation companies, and other involved parties is conveniently obscured. Geological disasters are considered natural disasters, so the government is essentially telling the homeowners through the experts that the government, Biguiyuan, geotechnical investigation companies, construction companies, and supervisory companies bear no responsibility. The occurrence of this subsidence accident is attributed to the homeowner's bad luck. According to our research on insurance coverage for Biguiyuan homeowners, we have found relevant information. The Ping'an Home Property Insurance Terms and Conditions of Ping'an Property Insurance states that its insurance liability includes losses caused by sudden subsidence of the ground due to natural disasters. If homeowners have purchased Ping'an Property Insurance, they may be eligible for compensation for the losses caused by sudden subsidence of the ground due to natural disasters. However, the preliminary conclusion given by experts for the ground subsidence in Tianjin Biguiyuan Residential Complex is that it is a sudden geological disaster and it is not ruled out that the drilling of geothermal wells has encountered deep geological structures, resulting in shallow soil and water loss and ground subsidence. This is clearly not entirely consistent with the provision in the Ping'an insurance terms. The China People's Property Insurance Company additional coverage for property damage caused by debris flow, rockfall, sudden landslide, and sudden ground subsidence insurance terms and conditions states that this insurance covers losses to insured property caused by sudden ground subsidence. Furthermore, the terms provide an explanation for ground subsidence. Ground subsidence refers to the sudden collapse of the Earth's crust, due to natural vibrations or the contraction of geological layers, or the sudden collapse of the ground due to erosion caused by tides, rivers, heavy rain, or the presence of cavities or mines underneath the construction site. However, ground subsidence does not include the sinking, cracking, or collapse of building foundations caused by unstable foundations or failure to meet construction requirements. 
Please note that the specific coverage and claims process may vary depending on the terms and conditions of individual insurance policies and the assessment of the insurance company. It is recommended for homeowners to review their insurance policies and consult with their insurance providers for accurate and detailed information regarding the coverage for the ground subsidence incident in Biguiyuan. This indicates that an analysis is required for the specific circumstances regarding the ground subsidence in Tianjin, including the possibility of geological cavities below 1,300 meters and the potential involvement of geothermal drilling in deep geological structures. It is important to note that the insurance coverage and its applicability may vary depending on the specific terms and conditions of the policy, and additional coverage may require separate premium payments. Regarding the classification of the Biguiyuan subsidence incident as a natural disaster, the responsibility of the local government is to provide natural disaster relief to the affected individuals. We were unable to find information on the compensation standards for disaster relief in the Jinnan district of Tianjin. According to the Tianjin Ground Subsidence Control Management Measures, for construction projects within the ground subsidence area, the developer should establish ground subsidence monitoring facilities, and the operation and management company should strengthen the ground subsidence monitoring and take necessary preventive and protective measures to ensure the safety of the project. The measures specify five situations, including super high-rise buildings exceeding 80 meters in height, but the high-rise residential building in Biguiyuan is 26 stories tall which is just below 80 meters. This may not be coincidental. Indeed, it is important to question whether the Bigui Yuan homeowners are being denied their rightful compensation due to mere lack of luck, or if there are deeper reasons worth contemplating. The allocation of responsibility should be thoroughly examined and addressed. It is crucial to ensure transparency, fairness, and accountability in such situations, to protect the rights and interests of the affected homeowners. But in China, under the governance of the CCP, is this possible? Please feel free to leave your comments below, and don't forget to like and share the video. Thank you for watching.